Travis. So start right at 8 o'clock, and what I'll do is I'll still play music, and as soon as I see the intro start, then I'll shut it down. So you remember, you always control it right at 8 o'clock. Yep, I follow your lead. You're the boss, not me, remember that. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Welcome to A Different Perspective. I am always so excited that you guys are with us on this beautiful Saturday morning. And I think it's the 13th of August. Um, not that I'm counting down some days, but I think there's something coming up in a couple days. But we'll keep that yeah. private. Uh, but no, but I'm just kind of giggling and laughing because it's been such a great morning. Uh, if you ever want to be in studio, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, we were just really just all bounced around, jamming out really 10 seconds <laughs> before we came on video. So it's just a fun time that we do have. Um, we take our shows so very seriously, but man, I'm telling you right now, and I'm gonna hit the last 10%, is life is, can be extremely enjoyable, and it's exciting to see the things that we always have happening, and just life in general doesn't mean there isn't things that are stressful, we know that, but anyways. Good morning, we'll talk about that last 10%. But anyways, I uh, hope you guys are doing wonderful. It's been a great week as always. Uh, amazing things happening. And um, yes, and someone asked me the other day about the newsletter. Um, they said, uh, my goodness, Doc, you have so much stuff going on with the newsletter and everything. So please do me a favor. Go to the website. It's really easy to sign up. Get there, scroll to the bottom of the page as you can see, type in your email address because what that does, that gives us an opportunity to share everything going on um, now, we used to be able to get my speaking schedule and things like that, but obviously I am taking a break from speaking as I'm here every day as the company continues to grow and do things. And so sign up, you get the news there, you get the articles, you can see everything that goes on. It's absolutely incredible. So continue to sign up. The, I'm very grateful every week seeing the amount of people that register for not only our newsletter, but for our shows and everything. And we are, once again, and Brandon's right here, um, is we have record breaking months every single month. Um, there was a time where we talked about just the amount of thousands of people that pop on here per time, even live and stuff. It's pretty incredible. So I'm thankful and blessed and I really appreciate it that way. Now, that being said, is if you know when you go to the website, you know, thewellsplay.com, it's by far the place that everybody goes to see all this stuff, including the shows. Some people say, remember, if somebody says, well, you know, we want to share about the Wellsplay, always guide them to the website. The website actually is the first place that not only the fact that you can get all the videos, all the information, things that, yes, we have every possible social media aspect that way, but the website is a concentration of everything. But then when you go to the website, you can actually do this. You can find a clinic. I mean, the find a clinic is absolutely incredible. You get to see the different areas that we have. And as I, as I said, like uh, Dr. Kellen's here today, she was down by Dr. Jenny, that was in Pleasant Plary. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it's uh, there's, you can see her marker right there on the thing below. But we have offices all over, so go to find a clinic. And when you do find a clinic, here's what I want you to do, is one of the most important things that we do to get the great concepts of everything we do is actually the inflammation talk. So as you know, we have this wonderful promo video to show you when it comes to the inflammation talk and what it does. Learn how inflammation is at the center of sickness and what steps you can make to take control of your health. Visit thewellnessway.com and click on Find a Clinic tab. 
select a clinic near you, and then click Attend an Event. We provide the essential guidance to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance to restore your body to total wellness. We hope by attending these events that you can take back control of your own body for a healthier future. So go to all the clinics you can see, find a clinic, you'll be able to see what's going on and you can see they each have their own information talks. It's really how you get the concept and really learn things. It's always the key. I know that my hormone talk became so popular all over the world as crowds continue to come, but here's what happened. I always push people back to the offices and push people back to that information talk because I remember when I wrote that thing. I wrote that thing in college. I wrote the majority of it, and I didn't have the, obviously the clinical experience I did now and as I put my new examples and labs and stuff into it, but the concept was already there. Because when people get the concept, they get the results. Uh, one thing that did happen, and I want to put this out there, I got an email this week and said, Doc, I love the stories that you are sharing now about real live people because you talk about them, but to see them in person talk about it um, was heartwarming. May I come in? Uh, I, they lived in southern Wisconsin and said, may I come in to your team, to your amazing uh, studio and uh, all the things that are put together and share my story. And I'm like, absolutely. So if you have a story, a wellness way success story, uh, you are more than welcome to contact us and we would love to put you on camera to share these because that's your voice. This is your voice sharing your experience that happened. And so as you can see every week, we are trying to put the, more of the stories out there because who doesn't love stories? We love stories, and these are true events with all the practitioners that we have all over. So we got another beautiful story for you guys to see of the things that when you come to the website and you, you read about, you watch a video, something catches your attention, and you guys have some major health condition that you're suffering from, and all of a sudden you go to you go to find a clinic, you find an office, you go to the information talk, you start actually understanding, you get a different perspective, and then you start taking the actions to make your life better and take control of your health. And these are the kind of stories that can happen to you. There is hope out there. So watch this incredible video that actually will bring hope and healing to everybody. Hey everybody, Dr. Jason from The Wellness Way in Green Bay. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about food. Why? Because of what I've been through, right? I consider myself an expert in certain things like diabetes, heart disease, and all these other things because I have gone through them. And the main cause of all of that was always one thing. Food. It was the stuff that I put into my body. And one of the biggest things about my friend Renee here is that she's going to tell you her story about how she uses food for bringing her family together. Because the big shift that she made was getting all this food together, but also fueling her family in a healthy way. But the most important thing is it's not abandoning all the foods that you love. It's finding the replacements to make those foods you love healthier. And that's what Renee went through and that's what she did and that's how she still keeps those family meals together for herself and her family. I work at Christ the Rock Church in De Pere as the office administrator where I do a lot of organization and contact with all the people in our congregation and work closely with our pastor. I really have gifts in administration and um, I love to counsel with people. So the pastor has given me opportunities to sit one-on-one -on -one with women to counsel them through some issues that they're having. Um, and I loved seeing the people walking through the door. I'm a real people person and I love to interact with people. I love to um, take on new projects, see them through to the end and see them succeed. When it comes to making meals for my husband and our friends, I really enjoy it. I do, I plan two weeks out, so I don't have any stress in knowing what's for dinner tonight. Um, and I absolutely love to entertain. Um, anybody who knows us well knows that we love to call people and say, hey, why don't you come over? We're gonna cook out or we're going to um, have a nice meal or I'm trying something new. Do you wanna come over and try it? So I, I love to entertain and I, I enjoy cooking. It's kind of my stress reliever when um, I come home from work. So before I came to the Wellness Way, I really struggled with my stomach issues. And it got to a point where I was afraid to do things. My husband and I love to hike and when we travel, we hike a lot. But 
There are times where I would eat certain foods and I couldn't go anywhere because I needed to be near a bathroom. And it was to the point where it was really frustrating and I didn't understand what was going on because I thought I was eating healthy, I thought I was making right choices, and a lot of times I just ended up with terrible stomach issues and couldn't leave the house. And that was really, for me, that was really hard because I love to be outdoors and I love to be with people. I found out about the Wellness Way through uh, my friend Rob. Uh, he had been going here probably about six months prior to me coming on board and I just heard his success stories and how well Dr. Jason helped him with his issues that he was having. And then my husband came to me and really encouraged me and said, Renee, I think you really should try out the wellness way. Um, give it a try, what have you got to lose? And I was to the point where I have to do something because I was miserable. So I made the phone call. I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure of what to expect but I got an appointment with Dr. Jason, got in right away, saw him. I Immediately, I felt at ease. I felt like there was a connection. So the first thing was a blood work and they were going to test um, for allergies and all my food sensitivities. So I couldn't wait to get that back because I was, I was very, very curious as to what was causing all of my issues. And so I got um, my form back and I was very, very surprised. I had no allergies, but I had 30 some foods that I have um, sensitivities to. And the worst was there was bread, there was milk, there was blueberries. These were all things, oh, and eggs. Eggs was something I, I have to stay away from. And that was causing a lot of my stomach issues and things. There are many things on that list, but Knowing that now, I'm thankful that seeing that list is helping me feel so much better. One of the things that Dr. Jason taught me was don't look at what's being taken away, but look at all the things that you still can enjoy. So for instance, I learned that instead of chicken eggs, I can eat duck eggs, and they're amazing. Um, instead of milk, I'll do lactose-free milk and that doesn't bother my stomach anymore. I had to stop looking at the negativity of the, my 30 plus sensitivities and look at all the positives and all the other things that I could eat. So I've been on the Wellness Way journey for a little over a year now. And in the beginning, it was a little tough, but I had put my mindset to it that I was gonna do this because I wanted to take my life back and I wanted to feel so much better. So I got on board with everything Dr. Jason asked me to do. And to this day, I don't feel nervous about leaving the house after I eat a breakfast or after I eat a lunch because I know I have made good choices and I rarely have those stomach issues anymore. And it is, a, it is such a good feeling. So what does my health look like through my husband's eyes? Well, Mark has been my biggest cheerleader on this journey, and he has seen me go from way down here to way up here, and he's probably just as excited as I am, if not more excited, because he knows how badly I was feeling at times um, with my leaky gut syndrome, and now he sees me more active, more happy, more at peace, and it's just really changed my life and his life because we can do so much more together. It's great to be able to go out, to go hiking, to go biking, to go and even work out in the morning or, or even go to work and not have to worry about it anymore. And it's such a great feeling that I hope that anyone who's listening to this will actually take it into consideration and try the wellness way because it really helped me. I mean, it's a journey, you, you got to keep at it, but it's so worth it. So if you're out there and you're suffering stomach pain, all these digestive issues and everything like that, it's an amazing stressor. It ruins and rules your day every single day. Just know that we've been dealing with this for a long time. 
We see people come in with us every single day. We have clinics all across the nation and we are ready and willing to help you. If you can't get to us, if you're not near us, call us. You don't have to do this alone. It's one of my favorite things is to walk side by side with somebody, guiding them through this journey and restoring their health. Because that's our job, is to restore your health so that you're in charge of your health. Not us, you. And we'll teach you how to get there. Another wonderful story of a great thing that happened and we love sharing these and thank you, Josh Jason, for sharing another one of the stories. Uh, Dr. Jason and I have been together for what, 19 years and there are all the other docs that uh, have amazing stories that we're gonna bring from all the clinics across the world. But um, just watching that and I'm sitting here watching on the screen and, and just seeing the emotion behind and the, the issues and I literally am gonna share this at the end. I'm reading emails as, as the show is coming about about the amount of sick people and suffering. And like Dr. Jason said, and this is true, um, we stand next to you on this journey. It's important to have people side by side through that. So it's great. And, and as we have those things that happen side by side, and we share more of our stories. I've been blessed to actually uh, be interviewed. There isn't a week that doesn't go by where I'm not interviewed on people's podcasts from all over the world. And it's great. It's exciting. I, I have the opportunity to share a message with people and, and be on different platforms. And I was on an amazing platform of a woman that uh, um, her name is Courtney. And she has a, a huge podcast called Real Foodology. And we connected at such a level because our thinking and our perspectives are very similar. And then her audience reached out and I got really thousands of messages from her audience about the things that go on with hormonally. But then the nice thing is she's done such a wonderful job of putting things together as far as uh, some food and, and hot topics that we talk about on a regular basis. So what we're gonna do today, today we have an interview um, with Courtney from Real Foodology, and it's our hot topic today. So I wanna share a great collaboration that her and I have, the Wells Way, and she has together, um, and sharing some of the stories. And I wanted to show you that, once again, that there are other people out there that kind of share these perspectives, and there's great people that you can watch. And I'm very excited to put her you know, on the show today to show that, listen, there's wonderful steps that you can take, as you saw from Dr. Jason's patient, um, the steps that Renee needed to go in order to help her stomach problems go away and those food choices. So it's a great aspect that I got to interview uh, Courtney from Real Foodology. So let's dig into our hot topic today. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our hot topic today. Today's a little different from what I normally do because as you guys know, uh, I get to meet some amazing people from across the world speaking that way. But I, was, I had such an honor to be able to be on Courtney's um, Real Food podcast that way and getting to know her and then starting to actually follow her on Instagram, which I highly encourage you to do. She got an incredible Instagram uh, page that way. We have a love for a lot of certain things. As you guys know, my background's in nutrition. And so, and, but even though my background being nutrition besides my doctorates and things like that is it's very hard to find actually somebody that truly understands nutrition. And I can honestly tell you, from the first day I met her, it was like the, the female version of myself when it came to foods and stuff. And because there's very few, rare to ever find a woman that's obsessed with uh, organ meats and things like that. So I want everybody to welcome Courtney Swan to a different perspective today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, so I've gotten to know you quite well, and I want everybody to know where you started and what goes on, what your background is, and then we gotta get into Real Foodology. I love your website, besides your Instagram page, everything. So tell everybody about yourself. Yeah, so my health journey started when I was a kid, actually. I feel very fortunate that my mom was very into healthy eating my whole life. I had basically every meal made for scratch or made from scratch for me. She was really into buying organic food, even when it was not really a thing. Like a lot of people didn't really know that about organic food and natural food and all that, like we didn't have the typical, um, I didn't grow up on the typical standard American diet. So when I went to college, I had not really eaten a lot of fast food. I was used to all my meals being made from scratch and I got really sick. I gained a ton of weight. I got really, uh, became very fatigued, lethargic, uh, a lot of brain fog. I, I just, and I, I didn't really understand initially what was going on because I had grown up eating so healthy and then I just had not made the connection yet of what food I was putting on my body and how it was affecting my health. Um, my mom started sending me all these books about health and nutrition. I ended up taking a nutrition course in uh, school. This was for my undergrad and it was one of the last classes I took. It was very last semester and I was so bummed because I was like, okay, this is what I really need to be studying. I became so passionate about it. 
Uh, and I, it was the first time that I realized that I could really take my health into my own hands. And I started studying a lot. I was reading every book I could get my hands on. I found people like Michael Pollan and Dr. Mark Hyman. And I got so passionate about it that I decided to go back to school. I got my master's in nutrition and integrative health, which is a, uh, well, I, I assume most of your audience knows mm -hmm. what integrative health yep. is, but it's, you know, uh, putting the holistic and the Western medicine together. And um, I worked in music for a long time before I started my career, which was um, amazing. And then I started Real Foodology. I started this podcast and I started my Instagram where I do uh, educational posts just to help people understand how to eat healthy because we've made it really hard in this country. Yeah, we have. And I want to I want to bring this back because I think after our podcast that way that you did is we sat and talked for about a good half an hour. I want people to know because if you think of this way, um, when we started talking about organ meats and things like that and some of the things that I believe that people should do, uh, it really intrigued you because that's something that you believe and know quite well. And I always talk about, I said, women, if you want to keep the skin beautiful and things like that, and Courtney, I know people are going <laughs> to, women hate when I do this. Tell people how old you are. <laughs> I'm 37. Yes, exactly. And actually, and I had someone this weekend uh, think that I was still in college, yes, which was really crazy. <laughs> now, and we will contribute the beauty in the skin because remember, vitamin A and everything needs to be for skin that way. And ladies, I'm telling you, the stuff that you can get and the youngness that you can get from organ meats. So tell people how you kind of got into that and why you believe organ meats are so important and why I've seen your posts about it. I've seen things about that way. Give, give me a tip of being a woman because coming from a guy, people are like, well, Doc, you eat liver and heart and you're a man and some of that. But I said, but you're an educated woman and stuff that wants health and beauty. And, and I know cosmetics and beauty and stuff is very important to women in every single way. And I'm, I agree with you that way. But uh, lead people though where you've really found out the organ meats are some very key for skin health and everything and why you're obsessed with it also. Well, uh, so I know that organ meats have the most bioavailable nutrients possible. And I know a lot of women are really scared of them. I think, well, in general, as society, we've become really scared of eating organ meats. But what we don't understand is that they were considered to be the most prized food uh, with our ancestors. Like mm -hmm. it was actually whoever um, was able to make the kill, their prize was that they got the organ meats because our ancestors knew that they were the healthiest uh, that we could eat. Because now a lot of us, we're only eating muscle meat and we're getting about half of the amount of essential nutrients from the muscle meat because the organs are really what stores all of those essential nutrients. And I think there's a there is a huge common misconception that because the liver filters out all of our toxins, that it holds on to these toxins, but it just filters it out. It's the the way to get it out through the body. It's not actually storing it. And what it does store store is uh, highly bioavailable nutrients like B12, vitamin A, retinol, vitamin K2, DHEA. These are all essential not only to for skin health but for overall health in general. And then I would add to organ meats are amazing, but also collagen, I would say, is mm -hmm. one of my secrets to keeping my skin elastic and uh, looking vibrant because collagen has a lot of essential nutrients as well. That it, it, It's also because your, your collagen is what keeps your skin elastic. And when you're taking collagen, we, we lose a lot of collagen throughout the years. And so you want to replace that collagen that you're losing. Now, if you look at what you get from messages and you get on your podcast that way, what are you noticing out there with all the women today when it comes to their food sources, their choices, and the conditions that they're suffering from? A lot of women are dealing with stomach issues, thyroid issues, metabolism issues, and it really all stems from our hormones. A lot of women are on birth control, and unfortunately, birth control creates vitamin deficiencies um, it's also causing our hormones to be completely all over the place and imbalanced. It is a common misconception that birth control, uh, what is, the, I'm like completely, it, we are being told that birth control is balancing our hormones. It yeah. is not balancing no. our hormones. It's actually shutting off ovulation and is completely replacing our body's natural and real hormones with synthetically made hormones. And we are no longer ovulating and have having a normal period. And I think for the longest time, women were told that our period, we just really needed it for t fertility and that's it. But women's periods are our, our monthly report card. That is how you know if your health is, is in order. And for women, that is our number one sign that something is going on in the body. If you're dealing with hormonal imbalance, 
um, thyroid issues, stomach issues, most likely it is stemming from your hormones. And I think a lot of women have no idea that they're, they're messing up their hormones as badly as they are with birth control. Now going from the world to music to food, what was that big transition that said, okay, listen, I, I need to start Refoodology, I need to do an Instagram page. What was that big passion and what actually led you to make that career change? I got really into nutrition as I was graduating, like I said, with my undergrad. And I started reading all these books. And while I was on the road, when you're touring with bands like that, it is really, really hard to take care of your health. And I became hyper vigilant about it. I was grocery shopping for all of my groceries. And for people that don't really understand what that means, touring with a band, I was living on a tour bus and we had a tiny little fridge that I had to share with 12 people. And I eventually quit because I cared so much about my health and I realized that this was not going to be sustaining for a long time. I really needed to live a different lifestyle because it is really hard to, to eat well on the road. And I had quit and then I ended up getting pulled back on the road because uh, there's a Swedish pop star named Tovlo and her tour manager was a really good friend of mine and he reached out saying that he really wanted someone who could help her with her diet because she came here from Sweden. Um, she gained a little bit of weight when she first moved over here, as a lot of people do, especially when you're coming from Europe to the US. A lot of people complain that they will continue their same diet here in the US and they will still feel fatigued, they'll gain weight because our food is very different here than it is in, in other countries. And I got really passionate just about helping people with their health. And ultimately I ended up leaving just because I wanted to pursue my own career. But um, I was helping her on the road. Uh, this, so you mentioned my restaurant guide. Yep. I have this restaurant guide because I was in every city that we were in. So I went to 36 countries with her. And every city we were in, I would wake up in the morning and I would find where I could uh, get organic smoothies, organic juices, organic food. And I compiled a list and I put it all on my website. So you can go on there and, and you can find restaurants from all around the world that are healthy, organic, depending on whatever city you're in. Yep. Well, the nice thing about your website, I was on it and we were talking about it before. I'm on it right now and you can go to Restaurant Guide and I was so excited because there's so many restaurants on there to see as I travel and speak at that way. But I was even more excited that the fact that on the Wisconsin tab, there was no restaurant yet. For the people that know our organic, fully organic restaurant here in our corporate office will be opening in the fall. So it's gonna be very excited being on your website there. So I'm Amazing. looking forward to that. Um, we we'll have to go with, try it. With all the counseling and guidance that you've given people, um, what do you think are, give me a several top misconceptions that you hear from people as they're sharing their health journey with nutrition. Like, what are they taught that you're just like, my goodness, it's so wrong what you're taught uh, about what you're eating. Share some of those misconceptions that you deal with when you actually guide people on what to do. Let's see, I would say the biggest one is that people have been told to fear fat. Uh, there was that whole, obviously everyone knows the, the low fat movement that was very pervasive in the 80s and 90s. And I still hear this to this day. I mean, I had someone this weekend tell me that he avoids red meat because he's worried about the saturated fat. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh no, you're going about this so wrong, so backwards. And people believe that dietary cholesterol equals serum cholesterol, which we now know is not the case. Right. Um, a lot of people avoid eggs because of this. They avoid butter, they avoid red meat. And the real problem is sugar. There was actually a study done in the 1970s with Harvard scientists. And what they found was that it was actually sugar that was contributing to heart disease. But the sugar industry got wind of this. They paid off these scientists to say that it was fat and cue the low fat movement. And we're still dealing with those effects today. Um, and I'm here to tell you that dietary fat in healthy forms is one of the healthiest things that you can eat. So butter, but you want organic grass fed butter, I would say olive oil, you want to avoid seed oils because those are mm -hmm. highly inflammatory, very highly processed, and they have a higher incident of omega-6s to omega-3s. And you want that in a ratio and you actually want the omega-3s to be higher than the omega-6s. Yep. So you want to be careful, you want to avoid the canola oils, the soybean oils, all of that, but you want the good healthy fats. So like I was saying, grass fed butter, olive oil is really good, olives, avocados, good fatty salmon, if you're getting wild caught salmon from a good area. Um, that would be the biggest misconception that I see. And um, I think people are finally waking up to this, but for a long time, people didn't really understand how bad sugar was for us. Mm -hmm. 
and they're not aware of how much sugar is in our food. I'm hyper vigilant about this and I check every single label now, but yep. <clears throat> you can find it in salad dressings. We're finding it in our nut milks, our peanut butters. I found sugar in soup the other day. Yep. We don't need sugar in all of this stuff. And if you're not aware of it, you can very easily eat up to probably 60 grams of sugar a day. And we should on average be eating. I try to keep my sugar intake under 20 grams a day. Yep, yep. And one thing is this, what people realize is it can, it can be hidden. And on top of it, you know, they're eating such highly processed sugar, which is even worse. So I'm gonna fire off a couple foods and I want you to just tell me your first thoughts and what you think about it. Okay. Number one, soy. Ooh, <laughs> I am not a fan of soy. Soy has, yeah, it has mm -hmm. phytoestrogenic properties, which means that it raises the estrogen levels in our body. In our body, it mimics estrogen. Not to mention the problem with uh, soy in the U.S. is that I don't remember the exact percentage now. It's probably ninety-three to ninety-five. Yeah, ninety-four percent. There we go. GMO. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Of soy is genetically modified in the United States, which means that it is being highly sprayed with pesticides. It is a common misconception that GMOs equals less pesticides, but we are actually using more pesticides than ever because of yep. genetically modified food. And the majority of soy is genetically modified. So yep. unless if you're eating organic, yep. it's GMO. Corn. Oh, I am not a fan of corn either. <laughs> there am I. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> So again, uh, the majority of corn in this country is genetically modified. And actually corn is even more terrifying than soy because there is a variety of corn called Roundup Ready corn. Mm -hmm. And the, if people are unaware of what Roundup is, it was, or it is an herbicide created by Monsanto. Monsanto was bought out by Bayer a couple of years ago. And it is known as a probable human carcinogen according to the World Health Organization. And Roundup Ready corn is exactly how it sounds. It has Roundup literally in the seeds of the corn. And the reason that they did this is because when insects eat that corn, it blows up their stomachs. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, we decided like, oh, that's not gonna affect humans. And we are consuming it on a pretty high level now because Reapers. if you look at processed, la or any sort of processed label, if you look at the back of the box, it almost always says contains corn, wheat, and soy. So we are being completely inundated with corn in our yeah. bodies now. We're eating way too much of it. Sauerkraut. Oh, I love sauerkraut. Yeah, me too. Yep, it's re yeah, it's really good for the microbiome. It is full of really healthy uh, bacteria for your gut, which is what you need for a healthy functioning immune system. And you want to feed that good bacteria in your gut. And sauerkraut is great. I love it. Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is another great one as well. Uh, it's a really ancient food. We've been, mm -hmm. uh, or food, drink. We've been yeah. consuming it for a really long time. It's fermented. So again, it's really good for your gut. It also helps people if you have uh, heartburn. It's really good to take a shot of it every morning just for overall digestion. And it's really good for your gut. Coconut oil. I love coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil has been debated a lot in the health, even in, in the health world for a long yes. time we were being told that it was really bad. And then we came back saying that it was really good. More recently, they're trying to say it's bad again. I kind of err in the middle where I say you don't want to overdo it, but I do think that it's a really good form of good, healthy fat in a moderate amount. And what's great about fat, which I didn't mention earlier, is it's really good for overall satiety. So the more fat you eat, the less calories you're going to need over time, just because you get full and more satisfied for longer. And coconut oil is great. It's also really good for your skin. I like to put it on my face sometimes. Yep. And what I is, put it in my coffee. What is Courtney's top five favorite foods? Oh, ooh, my top five favorite foods. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say number one, organic grass fed beef. Mm -hmm. Hands down, it has the most bioavailable nutrients out of any food. I hate seeing those comparisons online where they compare broccoli. Oh, to it drives beef. me nuts. There's no comparison. Zero. There's no comparison. Mm -hmm. The amount of broccoli that you would have to eat to get <laughs> even comparable amounts of vitamins that are in grass beef. I mean, you'd be, <laughs> you'd explode. Yep. You can't fit that much. Not to mention, uh, a lot of these nutrients are actually not bioavailable just because we can look at the nutrition profile of let's say broccoli, for example, it's not necessarily going to be bioavailable for the human body. Sometimes you have to eat other foods in order to make it bioavailable. Sometimes you need to cook it or you need to eat it in such high amounts that it is physically impossible. A lot of people have 
genetic mutations that don't allow their bodies to assimilate specific nutrients from these vegetables. And so, yeah, I would say grass fed meat is hands down the best. Uh, I would also say organ meats because it's the same thing. You get all these bioavailable vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and you could technically survive off of red meat alone because it has the whole profile of essential vitamins and nutrients that we need. I wouldn't recommend that because you want variety. Your microbiome needs a biodiversity in your gut. And so I wouldn't recommend eating that solely. Um, I would also say grass fed butter. Mm -hmm. It's really good, uh, really high in CLA. It's also really high in essential fatty acids. Again, it's a good healthy fat. It's really good for your skin. Uh, I'm a huge fan of it and I eat it every single day. Mm -hmm. And I would also say avocados. And let's see, how many more did I? Two name? more. Okay. Oh, I've got two more. Got two more. Um, I would say if you source it from a good place, which is becoming harder and harder, wild caught fish. Yes. Like wild caught salmon. Lots farmed. A lot of it's farmed today. A lot of it's farmed, and we also have to worry about microplastics in the ocean now, unfortunately. Yep. yep. But if yep, you yep. can get it from a good place, um, like Alaska, if mm-hmm. you can find like wild caught Alaskan fish, I would say that's yep. probably the cleanest that you can get. Um, and then I would say, I'm trying to think of like a really high nutrient dense, uh, maybe spinach yep. would be a good one too. It's funny because coming from a woman, that's why I wouldn't want to do this. I knew what your kind of answers were going to be here is the majority of your, your favorite foods are actually animal based products yep. and people, and, and I, it's, I, I find it funny when people are always saying, you know, Doc, I'm moving more to a plant-based diet. I'm like, I'm sorry. You say, and, and do it, it. It, it's frustrating because it, people realize that if you really want the essentials and, and, and you've dealt with this, we've talked about this, women who want to live vibrantly, live healthy, look good that way, you move towards plant-based, you're going to have, you know, less chance of actually having a better cosmetic aspect of life because you're going to miss all those essentials that your skin needs. Um, I think one of the most, um, and it, I don't know if you remember when this ever happened to you. Do you remember that we were in college? And all of a sudden, I, I had a couple of light bulbs come on, and that's what got me obsessed with organ meats when I was going through my nutrition classes in college, is that, you remember when your kids there said, you know, rabbits have good eyes because they eat all the carrots that have vitamin A. So, carrots don't have vitamin A. Carrots actually have, actually beta carotene, which if you're lucky, if you're lucky can be converted into vitamin A. You say, and most humans cannot do it that way. When I realized that they were actually lying to people saying that carrots had vitamin A. No, they have a pro-vitamin called beta carotene, but then you had to eat that. If you wanted vitamin A, eat the rabbit, not the carrot. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. So I yeah. follow this guy uh, on Instagram and he makes a lot of jokes this where basically he's he'll show a photo of steak that he's eating and he's mm-hmm. like, I'm eating plant-based because the cow that I'm eating was eating plants. That's awesome. And it's true, you yes. know, they, that cows are one of the most magical animals that we have because they have the ability to take plants and assimilate all the nutrients from it. Mm-hmm. And then we get those nutrients from their meat. That's what people yep. don't understand. And, and you just made a great point with the, the carrots. So we get carotenoids in the form of vitamin A from organic grass fed meat or from, yep. from red meat in general. Yep. yep. Well, a lot of people say, say, doc, are you a chicken person? No, I'll eat a chicken liver. I'll eat, that doesn't yeah. mean, like the other night I had chicken breast, great. But you know what happens this? I had chicken breast and um, actually I had a piece of cheesecake. I was telling people on the show the other day. And it was kind of funny, it was like, and they're a good organic piece of cheesecake, all good healthy ingredients. Uh, but I was still missing so much nutrients that I had to not only take a bunch of supplements and herbs, but I also took like eight capsules of where my digestive wound has liver, uh, kidney, uh, intestine, stomach, and stuff like that and trying to still get my organ meats just by capsulation because I just didn't eat them that day and everything. But we got to remember that going towards those kind of nutrients actually fulfilled that compared to eating a carrot. If I had even thrown a carrot in there, I was still going to miss all the essential fat soluble vitamins that I needed that way. And we're missing that. So let me ask you a question. When you think about the people that you've discussed stuff and guide that way, um, do you think people, even know if they eat enough food, are they more malnourished or hypernourished that way with, with the people that you see? absolutely malnourished by far yeah, yeah. By far. everyone is overfed but yep. undernourished yes because all of our food today is dead for the mm-hmm. most part when you think about everything coming in packages it's also been completely stripped and devoid of all of the natural 
any sort of minerals or nutrients that were in there. And then we're adding back in synthetic vitamins and minerals. Yep. And this is the problem too, is that a lot of these are not bioavailable. So you can look at that nutrition label and it'll say, oh, it has like 50% of your, you know, RDA. daily yep. folate or whatever. Yep, exactly. And, but just because it has that in there does not necessarily mean that it's going to be bioavailable for the yep. body. And not yep. to mention they're synthetic where we can be eating this organic grass fed red meat and we can get that entire profile or the organ meats. This is why the organ meats are so amazing. I saw a chart recently and I wish I could remember the exact numbers, but it was comparing the profile of organ meats versus vegetables, like different vegetables. And I mean, it didn't even, it didn't even compare. It was not even remotely close. Mm -hmm. And we have been told that we need to go plant-based because you can get all your vitamins and minerals and nutrients from eating plants. And I can tell you my anecdotal experience of it was that I was the sickest I have ever been in my entire life. I gained probably 30 pounds. I had cystic acne that would not go away to save yep. my life for four years. I was so starving and hungry 24 seven. I could never get satisfied. Uh, I was fatigued. I had brain fog. Mm -hmm. I had basically everything under the sun that you can imagine. I had, a th I had issues with my thyroid. I was having stomach problems. I had heartburn. I mean, I could yeah. go on. And then the second I started eating meat, it was like the weight dropped like that. Yep. My skin started glowing again. I had really dull skin then too. And I, I looked sick. I mean, it's so funny because when I, when I went vegetarian, I was 24, something like that. I look younger now than yep. I did when I was vegetarian. Yep. And I'm By 37 far. now. By far. Now, obviously, what's the best place for people to follow you, watch your stuff? I catch your videos every day on Instagram when I'm grabbing through my phone. I'm like, ah, Courtney's putting on another good video that way and stuff. So Thank where you. is a great place to follow you? What's a great thing to do? And, and share with everybody what you're doing. Yeah, so you can find me at Real Foodology on my Instagram. I do weekly videos where I go to the grocery store and I break down the ingredients. Ingredients are a huge thing for me and I'm I want people to understand how important it is to know exactly what you're putting in your body. And so I teach people how to read ingredient labels and I go over different foods every week in the grocery store. So that is my number one place. And then also have my own podcast called Real Foodology and you can find me on all major podcast platforms. Yeah, and I was blessed to be on it. Thank you so much for having me on it. I got literally hundreds of messages after I was on your podcast and everything. And so uh, just uh, sharing things because as that they learned is most people don't know how to test hormones and uh yeah. that was it was so i thank you so much for having me on your podcast it was fantastic and i couldn't um but and i can honestly tell you doing this for a long time having a background like you do doing things that way it was the first time i ever got to talk to a nutritional person that actually had things right it's not a joke i'm usually arguing with nutrition people that way really? and it was like it was it was actually so uh great getting to know you over the time and and see what you're putting out there and and so i said so you're the first ever nutritional person that I've ever had on our show a different perspective. So, wow. yeah, so I'm it's really like, um, thank you. No, it's been fantastic. So uh, keep up all the fantastic work. Keep on sharing your message uh, for everybody. Remember, uh, follow Courtney on her Instagram on her. Uh, I'm actually on her website right now. And I'm like I said, can't wait to have our restaurant on her aspect of it. She continues to put great videos. I watch them every yeah. single week. That way she's putting out great information. And it's also nice to see um, a very successful woman also promote organ meats so much and um, the benefits of it, ladies, because we do want you healthy. We do want you looking beautiful. We do want all those uh, aspects of vibrant health that way. So once again, Courtney, thank you so much for being on. Really appreciate all your work you're doing. Thank Keep you. it up and obviously we'll have you back on the show probably six months or so that way just to get an update all the great things you're doing. So thanks I for being on. I love that. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Appreciate you. Thank you, Courtney. Love that you're on. It's great to have conversations with you on a regular basis besides just having a great interview with you. So um, yeah, it's kind of exciting knowing that there's people out there that are putting great material out there uh, besides the Wellness Way, once again, because we will try to reach you know millions of people every week and, and get people uh, in the right direction so they live a better life and, and uh, so they can eventually have a story like hers. You can see that she was you know, a vegetarian at one time and has a great transition from her story. So we're gonna now go into our last 10%. My focus today on my last 10% is about stories. It's kind of like our TikTok here. You know, it's kind of interesting because our great and amazing media team uh, convinced me to go on TikTok and all of a sudden next thing you know, it exploded and, and uh, video went out there. Instagram, I can tell you right now that uh, the hard work that our team did, but especially Miranda, when it came to Instagram, and also TikTok, it's got set up, 
here's the reels and videos that we do have. And so go there, sign up for it, but it's kind of great because what's the key that we share there? It's really key is stories. Um, I got a question for you. Um, if you were to look back at the chapters of your life, what would your story look like? What would your end story look like? I can honestly tell you, you know, nobody knows when they're gonna die. It could be today, it could be on my birthday on Monday. No plug for my birthday though. <laughs> yes, people are saying, you know, Doc, share everybody, it's your birthday coming up. It is. And on Monday, I will, the August 15th, I will be 48 years old. And I look back and I reflect. And there's many stories, but God willing, the story continues. Uh, and I look forward to that. I think, you know, if you ever think about stories, I think one of the best times to really understand stories is Christmas time. You know, I always remember, you know, if you think about it this way, is Christmas stories. And I, I remember, you know, even, no joke, I, th I mean, it makes me smile a little bit. A story, you think about all of a sudden, you know, uh, grandpa sitting on a, a chair by the fire and opening a book and telling a Christmas story and reading stories that way. Everybody loves a good story. Um, but if you ever notice, a movie, the greatest movies are the best stories. The greatest speakers uh, out there are the best storytellers. So I want people to really look at it this way is when I started this, and you even look at the I Disagree book and you look at the things that we do and, and, and the videos that we hear, they're all about a story. So I got a question for you. Have you sat back and enjoyed your own story? I guarantee that your story has a beginning. Your story has some fantastic ups and actually has some tragic downs. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, you ever, one of my favorite things to watch is documentaries. Do you ever notice, because if you ever watch a Hollywood movie, there's some beginning of the story, there's something that happens, and you can always predict something's gonna go bad, there's gotta be a tragic part of the story, and then there's the overcoming, you know what I'm saying? Heck, if you think of it this way, that's basically every movie. But I do like documentaries. Me, you know why? Because sometimes the story is great all the time, and sometimes the story is rough all the time. I just love stories. Stories are so important for us to actually understand where we go, where we're going in the future. We can learn from our everybody's stories. That's why I like to share them. If you look at, I know they call them testimonials, but they're not a testimonial to me. It's a story because guess what? Um, you can have a story overcoming something, but you can tragically go back and do everything all over again. You know, if you ever look at uh, uh, the TV show, I've never watched it, but I hear about this. I read an article on it the other day. Is, what was it? 70% of all of the people from The Biggest Loser are overweight again. See, stories are important, but did you reflect and learn from the stories? See, I love history. I'm a big history buff. That's why people know I love the Constitution. I love American history. I even love our history from when I was over in England and Ireland. Um, it was nice to see buildings that were thousands of years old, even though the United States is you know, still a baby country if you think about it. But the idea is this, is you can learn from somebody's story and then you can learn from your past stories that way. See, people always say, you know, uh, you know, experience is a great teacher. No, learned experience, reflecting on it, learn from that story. So this, Pat, as I hit my birthday on Monday, this weekend, I'm going to sit back a lot. I literally am. Yes, I'm going to do my things I do every day. I grind every day. But this weekend, I'm going to sit back and reflect on 48 years of a story. Amazing ups, some amazing downs. Some things where you love getting up in the morning and put a smile on your face, and there's sometimes you get up and put a, get up and put a smile on your face when it's even hard to put that smile there. If you don't think that tragic things happen in my life, you don't understand my story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's okay, because long because you know as long as I'm um, get up every day, the story does not end. You know, people always tell me um, that they're in a difficult part of their life. You know, and I always tell people I don't care about somebody's past story. I want to hear it because here's what happens. I'm hoping that what this show, I'm hoping what the wellness way, I'm hoping that no matter where people are on their journey and their story, that every chapter becomes something different. People say, Doc, my past story has been rough. Well, good. I'm hoping that I come into the book and I'm part of your story and now we can create a beautiful novel just like most good movies and with overcoming something tragic. So when you look at these health stories, The Wellness Way, all of our doctors, um, and I had a, an amazing time with Dr. Sampson who came in from Montana and Dr. Thomas yesterday, and they shared stories of how they themselves, people showed up in their life, and they took their expertise 
And then you just like Jason did, just like Sam, just like all the docs and testimonies you've seen so far, have were put into the story and actually made a pretty good novel. But one day, I want you to think about this. There's an end to everybody's story. What would your last chapter of your life want to be? Do you understand that, yes, no doubt, people can come in your life and make a devastating chapter, but you still are the author of your own story. As I reflect over the next couple of days, as I hit 48 years old, God willing, I hope I live another 48 years. But I could have one year left in my story, I could have 10 years left in my story, and I'm the only person that can write the last chapter. So, that being said, I dearly appreciate all you guys that watch this on a regular basis. I do. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you guys sit here and listen to stories I get to share and the story of what starting this thing and actually implementing so many people that made this great. I'm the one person that will tell you that I get the most publicity because I started this. But even the people in this room are part of the story that could never happen. The chapter and the book and the, let's say, what they call when you write an autobiography, in any autobiography, you need to highlight amazing people that have come into your story and left your story because it's all part of it. So you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to celebrate. Me and Brandon are going to run now to Happy Bellies. I'm just in the mood for an organic cheesecake. I am. I am. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a, it's my birthday weekend. I'm going to Happy Bellies and grab some organic cheesecake and stuff of like that. And, uh, and so we're like, we're going to run down there. I need it. So, so we started the show before we, you know, they were gigging and laughing, and listening to music, and we're going to end the show with just some smiles. And thank you, and I want to thank you guys for 23 years so far of being part of my story. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A Different Perspective is leading a health revolution.